Hey guys, there's only one choice for Ben Grimm, the thing. It's Mark Wahlberg. He's perfect for the role. He's huge. He's got rock hard abs, we should just paint him orange. Say hi to your mother for me. Um, so one of the things that I really enjoyed about the film is how likable and relatable the characters are. How, how alike are you with uh, Jen and Pang? I feel like I, we're sort of similar, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I feel like Peng is a little crazier than I am. Relation <laughs> <laughs> that Hiccup may have to say uh, goodbye to, to Toothless. Yeah, I think I think it's it's um, they, they 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 formed a unit, you know. In in the first one, there it's less about two characters than two characters becoming one together. Um, th this is we're now two movies lived into this and. Uh, as Hiccup gets older, so does Toothless. And stuff gets slightly, I won't say complicated, but it's like, you know, um, every every mama's boy, the mama hopes that he's going to find a woman or a man later on that'll take over for her, you know, but doesn't make it easy for her to say goodbye. Now, Andy, I know you're a very talented singer. Have you and Greg ever talked about maybe next season exploring a musical episode? Wait, uh, us doing a duet, you're saying? A, a duet or a musical episode, maybe throw uh, Robbie can <laughs> get in there too. Heard you out of voice. <laughs> yes, yes, for a musical with Robbie. Um, that would be great. Uh, that's, the, that's the one. That's the one genre we haven't worked into the show yet. <laughs> that's so great that I get an episode off next season. I've heard he's a character created specifically for this film. Yeah. Uh, what, did you draw any inspiration from other characters from other films to uh, bring this character to life? I did. You know, I looked. I looked a lot at Simon Pegg just as a as a Brit, as a funny. Um, mm. uh, I see that. Yeah. yeah I see that. I, he's mm. one of my favorites. Uh, just even before, like just for from since forever. Um, I love Ricky Gervais, and I love his sense of humor and how um, obscure he can go uh, comedically. Forward, can we expect? you know, to you to wear multiple hats for each film that you work on? Uh, to, to answer your second question first, no, I, I really like getting to just be an actor on some films and on other films, I really, really love being able to do both. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm ingratiated into that world so much earlier on in the process and it's it's incredibly informative for, for the acting side. Um, but did she care about what Eugene thought about her initially? No, I think she was manipulating him to begin with, I think. Yeah, I, I think her intentions were more simple at that point. And yeah. then I think uh, I think she really, really cared what she what what Eugene thought of her. I think in fact kind of like her soul was almost at stake based on whether Eugene thought she was a bad person or not at some point in that story. This film is so much fun. Uh, it, there's so much heart and there, it's just a really fun family film. What about the script stood out to you and what sets it apart from some of the other roles you've been a part of? Um, well, I was actually really nervous to read the script because I was such a fan of the book. And um, so I was like, I, I immediately wanted to do it, but then was like, wait, you gotta read the script. Um, and oh, Brad did such an incredible job uh, and, and I just, I, it was such an easy yes, because, um, the script had everything and more that I could have hoped for. And, um, and it was just really exciting to do something that my kids already were familiar with. So, uh, so it was kind of a no brainer. Now, Ben, this, you, you voice a lot of some of my favorite characters. You take a different role in this film. What stood out to you about the film that sets it apart? Yeah, you know what? The script was awesome. Brad Copeland, who's a writer on Arrested Development and wrote a movie I was in a while back, wrote this script off of Kate's book, who's a genius. Uh, Matilda had read the book even before getting the script. Um, so um, the words, that's kind of what I always do is I'll, if the words get me, uh, then I'm, I get interested and then I start learning about who else is involved and seeing if it's something I want to play with. So the words really got me, but I did love that theme of hope. I did love the idea of being in a Disney movie, man. Seeing that logo before it comes on, it's something I've seen my entire life, whether it's like you know, live action movies like Honey, I Shrink the Kids or whether it's like Aladdin or something like that. It's, I've seen that logo my entire life and I go to Disneyland still every year. So it's like uh, to be a part of that world, no pun intended, Little Mermaid, uh, to be a part <laughs> of that world um, uh, was, was something I always wanted to do. So the idea that I could be a lead right next to Matilda starring in this movie is <laughs> a, a joy. Sensei, Sensei, sorry, Matilda, Sensei. I love Jordan and I feel like I connected with him the most because he was that supportive friend that Matt really needed. For you, what did Jordan uh, represent to Matt and 
what did he have to do for Madden? Was he able to accomplish that? First of all, I appreciate you remembering the character's name because I forget because I've done some. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> it's been two years. It has been two years. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, that, that was his name. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, some it felt good bonding, once again, just showing friendship, like legit friendships. And be- between men, right? This is like a sensitive situation. We don't see a lot of that in a lot of films, especially honestly among black men. So it was really cool to like show that friendship and like be there for Matt. And George, like I remember talking to the real life Matt and he was just saying that like, I represented like all of his friends that supported uh, him in real life, you know, at the, you know, yeah. at the time. So it- you know, hopefully there's a sequel. Uh, what what types of arcs or storylines do you kind of want to explore with this character? I, I don't know how far into the comics that you've read, but what types of stories do you want to see for her? Well, I, I it, the, the beauty about these films is like you can go past, future. Like it, it always kind of comes down to the decision that they want to go towards. But I feel like I'd love to expand the universe. Obviously, there's Valiant and 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 there's a Harbinger in the world of mm-hmm. Valiant, and there's more characters. And I'd love to kind of dive into the relationships of those. And I'd love to know more about her. I think that you know we kind of see that tip of the iceberg with her on this one. So I like to see what she's capable of doing also with her enhancements more and more throughout the movie because I feel like we just saw just a little bit of it. Since you're a huge fan of the society, you know, with the DC streaming service out, you think we can get a Justice Society a team or a show coming to there? I forget you asked these types of questions. I'm so sorry. Asked, <laughs> I'm well, so he so said, sorry. can you? So is it, it's like, I mean, is, it in the, is it in the realm of possibility? It's possible for humans Keep those cards it. and letters yeah. coming. Yeah. I know Not I to us, <laughs> but to yeah. JLU. Wrote me back in. But, you know. With uh, this jacket, of course he's yeah. a party animal. Huh? I'm going to keep talking about the jacket. <laughs> yeah. If you want it, well, you can take it. So uh, what We're other. about the same size. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, it's perfect. like, we could switch. What other future projects can you let us in? I know. You do play Bugs Bunny. Oh, that's right. That's that's been the going thing. I am uh, I'm the current voice of Bugs Bunny, yeah. Doc. Bugs Bunny's Filipino, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been trying to like animate him with lumpia in his hand instead exactly. of the carrot, but like, you know, no the more, Fili- no only the carriage, Filipinos will no get more it. Carrot just lumpia. Yeah, yeah. So, are you going to be involved in Space Jam 2? Space Jam 2. I am wearing a Space Jam hat. This is my quiet campaign towards oh LeBron. God. Oh my god. Uh, so LeBron, if you're watching, Doc, you you, you know, there's yes. room on the Lakers. Yeah, you got to no. you got to get me on there. Yeah, I'm, that's not what we say. Yeah, okay. We want me to say it. I want you to say it. All right. Thank you for joining us on your Saturday. You could be anywhere else in the world today, but you're here with us. We appreciate it. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Bravo. bravo. And we are joined by a special guest, uh, Mr. Mike Rum. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. California doesn't get much better than that. I know. I know. It's a congratulations. Thank you. It was so funny. But. There is also a strong message in it. Mm-hmm. Was that one of the reasons why you wanted to get involved in this film? Absolutely. Yeah. Every I don't know how much you know about my career and what the roles that I choose, but it's a method to my madness. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to push humanity forward. Yes. I'm trying to drop little gems that'll change a perception. Yes. You know, certainly of black people. Mm-hmm. Um and 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 just so all the roles that I pick will have something to say. Yes, yes. I'm a Nicolas Cage. Um, Primal, that'll be out sometime in 2020. Fun, yeah. like old school action film. How was it working with really good kid. icon like Nicholas He's dope, Cage. man. Like Nicholas is, uh, he's that dude. Like you could tell just by the way he carries himself. Like he's, this is what he does. He lives for it and he's yeah. been doing it forever. I'm here to present the You Should Have Died uh, Stunt Award. Now, everybody on the show, every all of you viewers know that I love stupid, crazy, like ridiculous out of this world action movies, because my favorite uh, film franchise is Fast and Furious. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, the difference for me is that I have to kind of portray all of my physicality and my emotion into my voice, mm-hmm. and it's proven to be kind of hard if I'm not like overly exaggerated with my movements, and, yeah, and I kind of feel like I'm in theater sometimes when I've, when I, I've never done theater before, but uh, when I'm behind the microphone in the booth, I feel very like animated, and I always have to like, emphasize and yeah. exaggerate my movements so I can push what I'm Make trying to... Make it more s- authentic. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes if I'm focusing too hard on the line, I'm not doing, I'm not like moving around, it doesn't sound as authentic as, as it does when I'm actually like being physical with it. Struggle with the most. In this position? Well, yeah. you know, I can't say that uh, that I'm familiar with, with that many. I mean, I only know Matt that has experienced anything, you know, like this. Uh, 
And, you know, I can say to anybody that has, I think the biggest struggle is just doing something and feeling alone while doing it. That's, that's the biggest struggle, you know, feeling like it's only you and just you and, and questioning why you and why not, you know, the other way around. Like, I, I, I think it's, it's more of what happens to the mind in the mind. But once again, that's, that's assumption and speculation. I, I, I don't, I can't even say that, you know, I'm confident in saying that I would have the strength to get past something like this, which is why I, I bow down to, to Matt and the amount of strength that he has put on display by just telling this story and overcoming this and finding happiness after and, and still being true and loyal to his uh, wife then, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of layers that go into something like this and, and I couldn't even imagine it. So, um, you know, that, that struggle and, and uh, that, that search for just what is my now? What am I supposed to do now? Um, I can only imagine how tough that is. It's great. It's insane. First off, I'd like you to thank your son for putting you in touch with Bloodshot. Bring Valiant Comics. Valiant Comic fans are super excited to finally see it on the big screen. Oh, so awesome. thank you to him. No. Uh, tell me about how you approach this character that uh, differently than how you approach the other iconic characters that you brought to life. The other characters that I play are three steps ahead, of, and, and we've grown accustomed. That's why we go to them. That's why we rely on them. That's why we trust them. Yeah. This is the antithesis of that and probably the draw and probably the challenge and the excitement of playing this character. He's in the dark just to get a, a, a small idea of reality is impossible for him. Uh, I started playing in my career. I started by playing a soldier for Steven Spielberg. There's, I'll always have a soft spot for playing a soldier. I, I played a soldier for Ang Lee, um, and this was the third time in a, an intense piece to to represent a soldier, and this version was a little different. This is the uh, version that touches on post-traumatic stress, and um, that concept, that, that, that thought that, that soldiers have all around the world, when they come home, will they be recognized or forgotten? Yeah whether sacrifices be appreciated or discarded. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of that in this. It's, it's a New York Times bestseller for a reason, and, that, and that's because of the compelling story. Yeah. 